Hello, this is Dr. Do again. This video is outside of medicine. Continue the real history through reading. I'm going to continue to read. The Israelites leave the Sinai on the twentieth day of the second month of the second year. The cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the um, testimony. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. They set out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah went first under their standard. Nashon, son of Aminadab, was in command. Nathaniel, son of Zohar was over the division of the tribe of Isachar. The Eliab, son of Helen, was over the division of the tribe of Zebulun. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonites and Merirites, who carried it, set out. The divisions of the camp of Rubian went next. Under their standard, Elizar, son of Shedeo, was in command. Shalumio, son of Zorishadai, was over the division of the tribe of Simeon. And Eliasaf, son of Dio, was over the division of the tribe of Gad. Then the Kahathites set out, carrying the holy things. The tabernacle was to be set up before they arrived. The divisions of the camp of Ephraim went next. Under their standard, Elishama, son of Amihad, was in command. Gamaliel, son of Pedazor, was over the division of the tribe of Manasseh. And Abidan, son of Gedeoni, was over the division of the tribe of Benjamin. Finally, as the rear guard for all the units, the division of the camp of Dan set out under their standard. Aizar, son of Amishadah, was in command. Pejil, son of Okran, was over the division of the tribe of Asher. And Ahira, son of Ainan, was over the division of the tribe of Naphtali. This was the order of march for the Israelites' division as they set out. Now Moses said to Hobab, son of Rui, the Midianite, Moses, father-in-law, we are setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well, for the Lord have promised good things to Israel. He answered, No, I will not go. I am going back to my own land and my own people. But Moses said, Please do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the desert. And you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled for three days. The ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them. During these three days, to find them a place to rest, the cloud of the Lord was over them by day. When they set out from the camp, whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, O Lord, may your enemies be scattered, may your foes flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. Fire from the Lord Chapter 11 Now the people complained about their hardships in the hearing of the Lord, and when he heard them, his anger was arose, then fire from the Lord burned among them, and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So that place was called Teberah, because of fire from the Lord had burned among them. Quill from the Lord, the rebel with them, began to crave other food. And again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat, we remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost, also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. 
we never see anything but this mana. The mana was like a conreared seed and looked like a resin. The people went around gathering it and then ground it in a hand mill and crushed it in a mortal. They cooked it in a pot or made it into cakes. And it tastes like something made with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down. Moses heard the people of every family wailing each at the entrance of his tent. The Lord became exceedingly, exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? Why have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms? As a nurse carrying the infant to the land you promised an oath to their forefathers. Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep waiting to me, give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you are going to treat me, put me to death right now. If I have found favor in your eyes, and do not let me face my own room. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me seventy of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent meeting that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take of the spirit that is on you and put the spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. When you will eat meat, the Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day or two days or five or ten or twenty, but for a whole month. Till it comes out of your nostrils and you lose it because you have rejected the Lord, who is among you and have wailed before him, saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, Here I am, among six hundred thousand men on foot, and you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? The Lord answered Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? You will now see whether or not what I say will come true for you. I'm going to stop here today and continue next time. Thank you for watching.